Hi everyone, this is Dr. Muhammad Afiz, Department of Ophthalmology, Kim's Carver. Today we will be talking about a very important test, uh, good old test called as Krimsky's test. Along with that, uh, other tests, uh, other corneal reflection tests we will be including is Hirschberg test and also one more test called as Brucker, Bruckner's test. Along with that, we will talk something about Purkinje images also. First, we will see what is Hirschberg's test. Okay? Uh, Hirschberg's test uh, is nothing but a uh, test based on the corneal, based on the corneal light reflex when you shine a torch on the cornea the light reflex which is formed on the cornea this is called as Purkinje's first image based on this uh, test is done okay we'll see what is uh, Purkinje images for example if this is the eye and you are shining a torch and this is the pupil uh, it will somewhere it will shine shine here this will be the uh, corneal reflex first and also called as first Purkinje images. Now, what is Purkinje image? For example, if you take a cross section, if this is the this is the cornea and this is the lens, we have four surfaces, first surface, second third and four surfaces for reflection these two are corneal ref corneal surfaces and this is the lenticular surfaces and when you shine a torch when you shine a torch the image will be formed here image will be formed on the second surface third surface and fourth surface respectively called the first second third and fourth images now if you look at these surfaces what you notice is this surface this surface and this surface are uh, same that is your convex and this surface is the odd one and it is a convex concave surface so the image formed on the concave surface this is a tiny image and it behaves oddly for example for example if you uh, these are the surfaces and you have the images here images here and the images here now this is uh, what happens is when you this is the torch light when you move the torch light upward this image will move upward this will move upward this will move upward but this image will move downward so the fourth image importance of fourth image is it is a tiny image which moves opposite to the direction of opposite to the direction of torch light or the light which you are showing uh, and, and importance of first image it is in the corneal right reflex test that is a Hirschberg test and Krimsky's test and the importance of this fourth image which moves in the opposite direction is if this image is not found there is a chance of uh, lenticular opacity that is the uh, cataract formation this is one of the test to uh, one of the torch light tests to uh, predict a cataract in a patient the absence of this image uh, uh, points towards the formation of cataract Okay, that is about the Purkinje image. Here, what which image is important? It's the first image, understood in Hirschberg's test. Now, in Hirschberg's test, what happens is if this is the eye of the patient, and if the patient is having isotropia, slightly isotropia, the eyes the eye have moved like this. When you shine a torch, this uh, it will fall on the center of the pupil. The image on this will be on the center of the pupil. The image will be more temporal. The image has shifted from the tem uh, uh, from the center to the temporal. The image will be on the temporal in isotropia. Or in case of exotropia, the image would have moved. The image would have moved more nasally. Understood? More nasally. Now, what they say is what uh, what they say is any one move one millimeter movement of one millimeter movement of uh, uh, light reflex will correspond to 7 degree 7 degree of uh, deviation for example if this is your uh, cord, uh, co uh, light and this is the pupil it should be at the center or just nasal to the center this light reflex but if it moves 1 millimeter 1 millimeter movement it corresponds to 7 degree of deviation if it moves towards the temporal if it moves towards the temporal it is called as isotropia and if it moves towards the, the light reflex, light reflex moves in the opposite direction. Light if, it, if the light reflex is moved towards the nasal, that means the eye has moved towards the temporal side, that is the exotropia. So, 1 millimeter is equal to 7 degree. Now, we know that usually uh, the size of the pupil is how much? Size of the pupil is around 4 mm. Understood. 
the central right reflex which has moved towards the pupillary margin that is around, that is around uh, so total size is equal to 4 mm so a half of that it will be around 2 mm that there is be 2 mm movement that means it corresponds to around 14 degree or 15 degree uh, deviation or exotropy or exotropia understood so any light reflex which is falls on the pupillary margin it corresponds to 14 degree or 15 degree of uh, iso deviation or exo deviation if it falls on the temporal aspect i mean or the limbus uh, it is around 45 degree and it in between in between if it is there it, it corresponds to 30 degree of deviation so remember if it is at the pupillary margin pupillary margin it is around 15 degree limbus it is around 45 degree and in between in the iris uh, it is around 30 degree understood and correspondingly we know that one degree uh, one, uh, half degree is equal to one prism diopter that means uh, one de one degree is equal to two diap two prism diopter uh, that pupillary margin 15 degree corresponds to uh, 30 degree of prism di 30 di prism diopter 60 prism diopter and if it is at the limbus the deviation is around 90 prism diopter this much you should remember about cornell reflexes is a basic test uh, and it's very uh, this uh, hirschberg test and cornell reflex test is very useful in cases of uh, young patients who are not cooperative for other patients other tests like very infants and all and also in patients like uh, whose visual equity is not there they don't have good enough visual equity to detect these tests are very very useful in detecting the uh, angle of deviation or how much deviation is present okay that's what about the Hirschberg test normally the center that first image will be at the center or just nasal to the center and every one millimeter deviation uh, one millimeter uh, deflection in the lights corresponds to around 7 degree or 15 degree uh, 15 prism diopter of deviation this is what i was talking see this will be on the right on the for example if, if this is the right eye and this is the left eye and patient is having left eye exotropia exotropia uh, here in this the first image just both the light are at the central so no deviation in this case it has moved towards the uh, pupillary margin so 15 degree of exotropia in between it is 30 degree of isotropia corresponds to 30 degree and when it is at the limbus it is 40, 45 degree of exotropia similarly you double for prism diopter you double it it corresponds to 30 degree 30 prism diopter 60 prism diopter and 90 prism diopter as simple as that okay this is the image real image uh, see for example this patient is having an isotropia can you guess how much is the prism diap i mean how much is the prism diopter or degree this here this uh, pupil reflex is central and the isotropia is present in this eye sorry the isotropia is present in the uh, for example right eye this is the right eye this is the left eye is right isotropia and since it is at the pupillar margin it is around uh, uh, 7 degree or uh, sorry 15 degree or 30 prism diopter and here also same thing uh, here the left eye isotropia is there but here just just uh, look at the image i think it's at the in between the limbus and the uh, limbus and the pupillary margin around 30 degree of uh, isotropia uh, no not no, isotropia is there both are isotropia this is the left eye isotropia that was the right eye isotropia here 30 degree of isotropia is there or in prism diopter it will be around 60 prism diopter now coming to crimps cases this is one of the interesting tests uh, here uh, you uh, supplement that hirschberg test with the prism what happens is now uh, you you place the prism in front of the normally fixating eye for example in the previous eye if this was the normally fixating eye if this was the normally fixating eye you place a prism there understood see uh, one thing you have to notice some books will say place the, you place the prism on the normal fixating eye some books can say you know, place the prism on the deviating eye both the way both are correct you can place the prism either on the uh, fix normal fixating or on the deviated eye both are correct but what i would like to say is it is very easy to do when you fix when you put the prism on the uh, normal fixating eye so we'll discuss based on that when you put that i'll show what happens so increasing power what is the this thing what is the end point centration of the reflex on the squinting eye understood this squinting eye this reflex should get centered this should uh, the squinting eye this white reflex should come in the center come in the center here also it should come in the center 
reflect your commandments and revenue keep the prism that is the end point that uh, that will show and the amount of prism required to keep get the reflex it to the center it corresponds to uh, uh, deviation in prism diopters directly it will give the deviation in prism diopter okay centration of the reflex on the squinting eye you have to check what well, well, this is how it is done see uh, please concentrate properly what happens is this patient is having an isotropia this is the right eye and left eye uh, i think this patient is having right eye isotropia now what happens you get the prism here hmm? in isotropia isotropia we know that in isotropia whichever eye you are keeping the prism keep the prism uh, base out in isotropia you keep it base out in exotropia you keep it base in understood see here since it is isotropia you keep the, this base is outside otherwise you keep the uh, the base will be here base uh, in exotropy base will be here since it is in isotropy a base is kept outside so what happens when you keep base inside just in, just see this figure normally i'll enlarge this figure normally what happens is both the eye this was the points uh, light source this is falling on the uh, fovea of this eye normally fovea of the normally and since it in uh, since it is an isotropy the eye has the eye has actually moved here since it's an isotropy the eye has moved here and the fovea which are, which was supposed to be here has moved inside moved outside and the light which is supposed to fall on the fovea since it's an isotropic eye it falls onto the nasal aspect understood this light falls on the nasal aspect now what you do get the prism on to the normal eye that is a non deviating eye now what happens this light gets you know that light gets deviated the light ray gets bent towards the base of the prism this is the base of the prism it gets towards the base of the prism and falls onto the temporal aspect of the normal eye now in order to correct what happens this fovea will try this eye will try to move like this try to get the fovea towards the direction of the light when the eye moves in direction when the eye moves in this direction in order to uh, in order to get this image on to the fovea that means eye is moving inward fovea will come like this when the eye moves inwards understood so when this eye moves inwards according to the herring's law of equal innervation uh, this eye should move like this understood when i this eye move like this this eye also should move like this when this eye moves like this this fovea will come towards the uh, direction of the this uh, direction of the light in an increasing order you keep the prism at which point this fovea will meet this light here that means this uh, this light reflex on the cornea will become central when the light reflex on the cornea become central that means fovea has reached this place so based on that uh, at the, what the strength of the prism this light reflex comes to the central of the cornea center of the cornea that is the end point that will give the um, uh, rough estimation of that prism diopter a deviation in prism diopter now if you want to get it in angle you divide by half what it will if you divide the prism diopter by half you will get it in for example if it was nullifying at 30 prism diopter the angle of deviation is around 15 degree understood always uh, uh, degree is half degree is in half diopter is in double now we'll see that image see here what happened when you get the prism uh, when you get the prism Uh, this move the the light reflex which was here since the since the eye has moved little it was an isotropic eye when you get the this thing this side uh, as this side will move this here as the eye in the same direction this side also move in this direction when the this side moves in direction this reflex this light reflex gets inside from the limbus it has comes to the center of the uh, iris now when it, when you get the correct uh, prism when you get the correct prism what happens uh, this high has come this eye has deviated like this this eye also deviate like this and it will come to the center of the it will come to the center of the eye so this is the end point understood S similar thing see in this uh, in this see if you two things you should remember in this patient the, this is the deviating eye that is the initially isotropic eye was this one understood now since you kept the prism here this eye has moved like this to get the uh, reflex at the center of the cornea center of the cornea now you can you you would think that whether this eye will go for isotropia no this eye doesn't go for isotropia as such 
because if you see the center of the uh, light reflex will be still at the center that means the eye moves in such a way that the fovea of this eye also focuses on the fovea of this eye we will also focus on the light not the any other it is getting fixed with fo fovea only that is the reason everywhere if you see the the reflex on the uh, reflex present in inside the prism of the eye will be on the center understood this doesn't uh, this is not going for isotropy or something like that but this isotropy is getting corrected and if one more thing is that the same thing same thing you can apply and see when uh, if you do it on the uh, deviating eye and the pr uh, principle remains the same in the deviating eye you have to see the reflection in the deviating eye itself when it uh, whether it comes to the center or not okay that's about the krimsky's test now coming to bruckner test what is bruckner test here what happens is you use a coaxial light coaxial light source using a direct ophthalmoscope which is placed at 1 mm direct ophthalmoscope you know when you do a direct ophthalmoscope at 1 mm it's called as distance direct ophthalmoscope it is not near distant direct ophthalmoscope and it is especially useful in infants and i'll show you what is bruckner test is you uh, shine a reflex on see here you shine a reflex something from 1 meter distance you shine a reflex onto the uh, forehead it will lit both the eye both die if any any of if if the if any one of the eye is deviated even if there is slight deviation there is a difference in the uh, brightness of the reflex the more bright the reflex more bright the reflex it is a deviated eye deviated eye and if the uh, reflex is um, if it's not that bright if the reflex is less bright that eye is a non uh, aligned properly that eye is non deviating eye for example, if you see, if this is the eye, and you are shining a torch, I mean distance direct of the light. What is coaxial? Coaxial means uh, you have to see through the light. For example, if this is the light source which is coming, and you are seeing through this hole, your eye should be coaxial. You are hitting the both the eye. What happens if this is the non-deviated eye? If this this is perfectly falls on the macula, and macula, you know that. Uh, RP is there increased RP and pigments are in increased pigment is then so the light reflected will be less bright because of the absorption but here what happens macula would have shifted somewhere here it is effect it is reflecting from the other part of the retina so when it reflects from the other part of the retina where their uh, pigment is less uh, more light is getting reflected so the light will be bright understood so in a deviated eye the light will be bright since it is reflecting from the other part of the eye so it's the difference in the brightness is noted if the bright lef the reflex is bright it corresponds to the deviating eye if the uh, difference is less less bright it's a non deviating eye the best uh, best part of this is it can detect a deviation of 2 to 3 deg uh, 3 degree even if the uh, deviation is very slight 2 to 3 degree deviation is there this brookerin test can detect but in hersberg test a minimum of 7 degree uh, de deviation 1 mm 1 mm deviation should be there to detect in hersberg test is very difficult but in case of Bruckner, it can two to three. But it is just a con. It is a qualitative, but it is not quanti. It, it will not quantify how much is the detection. It is just a qualitative, but it can detect. But the problem with Bruckner is there is high false positives and uh, false positives. For example, in uh, uh, normally up to the age of ten months, there is slight difference of the, even the eyes are normal. There is a slight difference of the brightness in both the eye that can lead to false positives. And one more thing in any any refractive where if the patient is having, there can be a false positives. Okay, thank you. That's all for the day. Uh, that's all for today's class. Uh, any doubts, any corrections, please let me know in the comment section. Kindly like, please share with everyone. So, and please subscribe to the, my channel and click the bell icon for further notifications. Thank you. Thank you one and all.